The universe is infinite and is expanding with every moment. Even the boundaries of our solar system seem to be forever unreachable. But with the wonder of modern technology and construction, man has succeeded in sending space probes to the edge of our galaxy. We were rewarded with unique images of distant planets. If you like our videos, please support us with a thumbs up, subscribe to Simply Space, and look forward to the videos that will be waiting for you in the future. Seen from the Sun, Uranus is the seventh planet in our galaxy. The distance to the Sun is 2.9 billion kilometers. While a day on Uranus is just 17 hours and 14 minutes, the years on the planet are unspeakably long. Uranus needs 84 years to orbit the Sun just once. So one season lasts about 21 years. It could also take up the volume of about 65 Earths and has with 51,000 kilometers four times the diameter. If you put the planet on a scale, you would have the weight of 14 Earths. Only Saturn, Jupiter, and Neptune are heavier. Uranus belongs to the so-called ice giants, not to be confused with the mythical creatures from the Nordic mythical world. This name also applies to Neptune. These giant planets do not get their name because of the low temperatures, but mainly because of their composition of water, hydrogen, ammonia, and methane. Of course, the term ice giant also applies to the temperatures. The average temperature on the surface of Uranus is negative 230 degrees Celsius. The planet was named after the ancient Greek god, Uranus, who, according to legend, is said to have been the father of Zeus. The ice giant was discovered in 1781 by astronomer Frederick Wilhelm Herschel, who at first thought it was a comet. Other planets had been discovered earlier. This is mainly due to the extreme distance of the planet from the Earth. In the best case, this is over 2.5 billion kilometers. The maximum distance, however, is unimaginably large at 3.1 billion kilometers. The Journey of Voyager 2 Due to the enormous distance, there has only been one mission to Uranus so far. One has to keep in mind that at a distance like this, the calculations have to be right and the launch of the probe should be timed exactly. So in the 70s, NASA planned a flight that covered the planets Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Over the years, the plans were partly rejected and the journey was shortened. So, we can say that we are lucky that Voyager 2 reached all its destinations after all and can now spoil us with unique images. The spacecraft was launched on August 20th, 1977. But how long did the journey to Uranus take? And how had NASA's technicians made sure that Voyager 2 reached its destinations by the fastest route? The calculations were correct. All four planets were in the right place at the right time. By means of a flyby maneuver, which made use of the gravity of the gas planets Jupiter and Saturn, Voyager 2 was able to continue its journey towards Jupiter. It passed through the asteroid belt, and to the astonishment of everyone, Voyager 2 never stopped and continued flying unharmed. The technical breakdowns were within limits. It took nine years until the space probe finally reached the ice giant. At a distance of 81,500 kilometers, Voyager 2 then took its pictures and sent them to Earth. The Moons of Uranus During its mission, the spacecraft has so far been able to discover and photograph 10 unknown moons of the planet. The 17 known moons have now become 27 known satellites. Miranda, also known as Uranus 5, was not discovered by the spacecraft, but Voyager 2 provided us with amazing and detailed images of the moon. The moon is the smallest of the five large inner satellites of the planet and has a unique surface structure. Consisting of canyons, mountain ranges, and craters, we see here an incomparable moon. For the orbit and the rotation, Miranda needs about 34 hours. 
somewhat irregularly shaped, in other words, not completely round, the moon's surface area of 700,000 square kilometers is slightly larger than that of France. On the same day, January 24, 1986, the spacecraft took pictures of the largest moon of the ice giant. With a diameter of about 1,500 kilometers, Titania is about half the size of the Earth's moon. However, this puts it in eighth place in the ranking of the largest moons in our solar system. Since the probe naturally could not land on the moon, not everything is known about its exact composition even today. However, it's assumed that the core is rocky and surrounded by water ice. It's also assumed that there is a 50-kilometer frozen ocean on Titania. The first moon newly discovered by Voyager 2 was Puck. Like most Uranus moons, Puck is named after a character from Shakespeare. Also, the moon Juliet is named after a well-known character from a drama by Shakespeare. Can you guess which play the character is from? Perdita, on the other hand, was not discovered until 1999, when the moon was identified and classified in one of the photos. Appropriately, the moon was given the name, the Lost One. After Voyager 2 had passed the moons of Uranus, a strong focus was put on the exploration of the satellites. Since then, the rotational properties as well as the trajectories have been studied and researched with the Hubble telescope, among others. Uranus, the ice giant. A photo of the whole planet seems unimpressive at first sight. In contrast to planets like Jupiter, the surface of Uranus seems almost completely unstructured. Also, in terms of color, no big differences can be seen at first glance. A freezing blue runs over the entire surface of the planet. The images from Voyager 2 made it clear that the ice planet is not subject to severe storms or endless storms like most other planets in our solar system. The cloud veil of Uranus is unusually calm, and the weather on the planet is anything but turbulent. It's assumed that the cool inner core is the reason for the mostly relatively unspectacular weather on Uranus. In another photo taken during the onward flight towards Neptune, it looks as if a huge shadow lies over the planet. The edges of Uranus shimmer slightly greenish. How do these colored radiations come together? And what elements does the atmosphere of the planet consist of? The combination of molecular hydrogen, atomic helium, and a small amount of methane gives Uranus its bluish surface. So you could not really set foot on the planet. But if you did, you would have to deal with a gravity similar to that on Earth. At 8.87 meters per second squared, this is about 90% of the Earth's gravitational pull. A man weighing 80 kilograms would therefore only weigh about 73 kilograms on Uranus. The journey of Voyager 2 has by no means come to an end. Even today, it still flies at the edge of our solar system. And still, we can count on it to send us new signals. The distance to Earth is now far more than 15 billion kilometers, and with each passing minute, it moves another 900 kilometers away. So, it will soon leave our galaxy. Only the space probes Pioneer 10 and Voyager 1 have completed another journey. Voyager 2 has revealed astonishing things and provided us with thousands of images. It confirmed that Neptune, Jupiter, and Uranus are surrounded by dust rings. In addition, the probe discovered a total of 22 moons previously unknown. Both Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 have a smorgasbord of cultural assets on board. Among them are records with music and messages. Do you think aliens will discover the records and have a chance to listen to them? Pictures from far away The space probe Voyager 2 may be the only vehicle that has come within reach of the planet so far. But modern telescopes make it possible to take high-resolution pictures of the Earth. A photo taken by the Keck Observatory refuted the assumption that the weather on Uranus is always calm. Because exceptions confirm the rule. The large luminous circles are probably enormous hurricanes moving at lightning speed across the surface of the planet. The Rings of the Planet The Keck Observatory 
took further spectacular pictures from a distance of almost 3 billion kilometers. An infrared image shows the otherwise hardly visible thin rings of the planet. Another infrared image shows not only the rings, but also the small moon Puck, which appears brightly illuminated to the left of Uranus. Voyager 2 also took close-ups of the rings. The stars in the background look like comets. However, this effect only occurred because the probe was already on its onward flight when the image was taken. In the shadow of a moon The Hubble telescope was also able to take unique images of the blue planet. When the shutter was released at the right moment, the moon Ariel cast a circular shadow on Uranus. Not all questions have been answered yet. It is just as questionable when or if a mission to Uranus will ever take place again. Which pictures have particularly impressed you? What topics would you like to know more about? Write it down in the comments.